This little green thing nestled underneath your liver is one of the most important structures in the entire human body, yet people routinely get it removed. And so the question is, well, if you're so important, why can you be removed? Is everything just going to be hunky dory or what are the consequences of cutting it out? Because this thing right here, and again, this actually is green, is called your gallbladder. And in today's video, our goal is to figure out what it does, where it is, why it is, and what on earth happens when you pull it out. So this right here is a real image of the abdominal pelvic cavity, and there's a lot to take in. Um, but the reason I want to show it to you is actually just, just let I me mean, look at this right here. This is the gallbladder. I, if you didn't believe me, which I don't know why you wouldn't believe me, uh, it is actually green. Like it's really green. I mean, not often <laughs> are things color coded the way that you might be drawing them in your anatomy books um, in the body, but the, the gallbladder is an example of where that is true. Now, I just kind of point out a couple different things you can see here. You can see the liver. This is basically the same image that you saw right before this. Um, but you know, just with, you know, the real human body. So, I mean, like you can see like the liver again, you can see the gallbladder, you know, you can see like the inferior vena cava, you can see the aorta back here. You can even see an adrenal gland, which is going to be on top of a kidney that is just kind of nestled in the back. But again, like this is a very, very busy area. And the main thing we're trying to focus on here is going to be basically digestion, right? Because that's what the liver and the gallbladder and just bile really are going to be involved in, in, at least in our conversation today, is going to be digestion. So, and I mentioned the liver because we're going to see that the gallbladder has a very intimate relationship with the liver. In fact, it couldn't really, it wouldn't serve a purpose if there was no liver. And so uh, let's kind of just kind of scan up here and kind of show you what I mean. So by the way, I'm using a 100% free Ken Hub article. We'll go ahead and leave that down in the description below. You're welcome to follow along with me. You can read a whole bunch. This is one of my favorite articles, by the way. I mean, we have, I love all of our articles, but this one is so packed with great information. I just want, I want to spread this to spread the joy of the gallbladder article to as many people as I possibly can. So please go check it out. You'll absolutely love it. But anyways, all right, so I'm going to enlarge this image here so we can see uh, this is a cross section. So this is what we would call a coronal or frontal cross section. So basically, it's like you're looking at the posterior half of the gallbladder. And what we're going to do is cycle through just a few different areas of the gallbladder itself and then kind of be able to piece together the function of it. So um, so again, this whole thing is going to be the gallbladder, but what we're going to be focusing on is this green portion to begin with. This is what's called the fundus. Now, if you spent even just a small amount of time in anatomy, you've run into a fundus, right? There's the fundus of the uterus, for example, or the fundus of the stomach. Fundus basically just means end. That's, that's all fundus means. And so yeah, I mean, when you're looking at it, this is a pretty good, that's a pretty good name, right? This is literally just the end of the gallbladder here. So then we also have this large portion, which is called the body. Now, um, the body is going to be what is actually going to contract to help push the bile out, whereas the fundus isn't really doing much of that. But um, I mean, the fundus will, but I mean, it's most of it is going to be coming from the body. So um, and then we also have what's called the infundibulum. So the infundibulum is kind of like just this portion that is about to leave. So basically, like this is the end, more or less of the gallbladder. I don't think I have a slide for the neck. I, I'll check in a second, but um, this is going to transition into the neck. And so an infundibulum is kind of like a stalk of sorts, right? Like you'll see like an infundibulum all the time in anatomy. Like a real easy example of that would be up in the pituitary gland where the hypothalamus is turning into the pituitary. But the infundibulum is going to be where it's basically you have this narrowing of the gallbladder as it's starting to head into what we're going to see is the cystic duct. And again, I don't think I have, I don't, I don't. So it doesn't really matter though. Um, there's actually like this portion here is what we would call the neck of the gallbladder. So again, it's fundus, body, infundibulum, and then there's the neck. And so what's going to basically be happening is we're about to see is that bile is going to just get squeezed out of the gallbladder and it's going to slowly have to make its way down into this thing right here. So um, this, this pink tube, it kind of looks like, a, I don't know, to me, <laughs> it kind of looks like PVC pipe or maybe like something out of like Mario. Maybe I'm just playing too many video games these days. Uh, but this right here is the duodenum and the duodenum is the very first part 
of the small intestine. And it's a very metabolically active area. This is where we're going to see like the pancreas is going to have a contribution. Obviously the gallbladder and the liver are going to have a contribution. But this is also where the stomach is going to empty its contents. And in fact, this is a very important part of this whole puzzle because the question that you might have that I often hear from students is how on earth does the gallbladder know that it's time to actually push bile into the duodenum? And it really comes down to what is called um, cholecystokinin. So cholecystokinin is this peptide hormone that is going to actually be secreted by cells inside of the duodenum once the duodenum recognizes that there's like fats and proteins. So basically like what we're missing, what's missing right here would be the stomach. So imagine like you have this giant stomach and what's gonna happen is the stomach through the pyloric sphincter is going to empty those digested contents, which we call chyme, into the duodenum. And as soon as the duodenum recognizes, ah, oh, we got fats, we got proteins, I need bile. And, and not just bile, by the way, it'll also kind of communicate to the pancreas, which is this, I don't know if you can see this, let me get that off there. I'm gonna come up here, if I can get it. All right, so this pancreas, see this like bubbly thing back here? This is gonna be the pancreas. And the pancreas is um, a really incredible, incredible organ. It's an exocrine gland and it's an endocrine gland. It secretes insulin, glucose, it does so many things, but it also secretes pancreatic enzymes. And pancreatic enzymes are also going to empty into the duodenum to help further metabolize different uh, substances. So like proteins, for example. My point is, what happens as soon as fats and proteins are present inside of the duodenum, cholecystokinin is going to get secreted and, and put and that's going to actually tell the pancreas and tell the gallbladder and tell the liver, we got food. It's time. Let's do this. And that is going to basically kickstart this entire process of squeezing the bile out. Now, one thing I want to talk about here, but I, I don't really, we don't really have it labeled um, in this particular article. Although if you are a paid subscriber, um, you are going to actually be able to take quizzes and you can actually see a lot more than what's available just here in this, in this amazing article. But I want to talk about the liver and basically how the liver is even able to fill up this gallbladder because the liver is one of the coolest organs in the body. In fact, I want to kind of like, let's find a different image of it. Let's go back to this one. I think this would be nice. So you can see this liver, which is a good color, right? It's like this reddish brown type of color and it's huge. I'm talking like it takes up the entire upper right quadrant of your abdomen and it's going to do a whole lot of stuff. I mean, like I'm thinking right now, I'm just going to have to do a whole video on the liver because it's incredible. Like, like I could talk about the liver for, I'm not even joking about a half an hour straight where I am just like blitzing to try to get it out. My point is the liver is actually what is going to produce bile. So inside of the liver, you have what are called hepatocytes and hepatocytes are liver cells and they're going to be able to make this bile. And what they're going to do, we'll go back up to here is you have these ducts. So you have the left and the right hepatic duct. Anytime in anatomy uh, that you see the prefix hep, that means liver. So when we have a right hepatic duct and a left hepatic duct, what's going to happen is they're going to combine into this, this uh, combined structure here called the common hepatic duct. And what's going to happen is they're actually going to push the bile retroactively. I don't know if that's the right word. <laughs> I said it confidently. And then like, as I was saying it, I was like, but you know what I mean? Like it's actually able to push the bile back into the gallbladder and then it fills it up. Um, and so it's going to go through this right here. This is called the cystic duct. So a duct in anatomy is just like a tube. So again, we have the, we have the left hepatic duct and then we have the right hepatic duct. They combine to create the common hepatic duct. And so you can picture like bile is being secreted by this liver thing up here, drop down here, and then it's going to make its way. And then it's going to fill up inside of the gallbladder. And you might be like, why? Like what, why on earth do we even need that bile? Well, let's, um, Let's go back down here. Um, actually, let's see. Let's see. Ah, we do have a cystic duct. So there's a cystic duct. You can actually see this right here, but this is a little bit better because we can see a teensy bit more of what I want to see. So this is going to be perfect. So basically, the reason why you need bile is because bile does a whole bunch of things. <laughs> but the big things that you're commonly going to hear about it um, are basically two. So first, it's going to emulsify fat. So it's going to kind of help break down and metabolize fats. And then second, it's also going to help 
reduce or neutralize the acidity of the hydrochloric acid that is released. So I want you to think about this, right? Again, the stomach is right here. Stomach releases chyme. Chyme is like this nutrient paste that was inside of the stomach and it's mixed with hydrochloric acid. That's gonna have a very low pH, it's acidic. So what'll happen is uh, the bile will be released and it's gonna go through this cystic duct and then it's gonna go down what we call the bile duct or the common bile duct. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna go down and it's gonna actually enter in, see this little, know, it kinda looks like a mushroom or something. Uh, this is called the major duodenal papilla. And this is the entry point for bile as it enters into the small intestine. And again, this is the first part of the small intestine called the duodenum. And you can see that like we're going down, the duodenum is like, kind of looks like a giant elbow noodle. Right? Like think like a macaroni noodle is basic, the basic shape and size, not size, but shape of, of the duodenum. And you can, um, and that's where bile is gonna enter into. Um, and you're also, by the way, gonna have the pancreatic duct come in here. So this is where pancreatic enzymes are also going to mix. And then they're gonna empty into the major duodenal papilla. And then it's gonna help to further break down and metabolize things. So, but again, you have all this, you have this highly acidic pH from the stomach acid coming into here. You need to be able to neutralize that. So again, as soon as the duodenum processes, oh, cool, we got proteins, we got fats, it immediately lets uh, the gallbladder know we need to, you know, we, we need to neutralize this acidity. So what'll happen is this little sphincter here is actually going to relax. And as it relaxes, the fundus and the body are going to start squeezing bile through the infundibulum, through the neck, and then through the cystic duct into the bile duct. And from there, it's going to drop down and then it's going to empty into the duodenum. But the thing is, the liver is also going to, at that same exact time, be dropping bile through that left and right hepatic duct, and then that is going to also go down. So basically, at the same time, you're going to have the gallbladder and the liver delivering bile to this area, neutralizing the stomach acidity as well as, um, or the stomach acid acidity, I should say, not the stomach's acidity. Um, but it's going to it's going to neutralize that acidity, um, and it also it's going to optimize that acidity for the pancreas. So here's another thing to think about. Stomach acid is actually not that acidic. And this is kind of like this, because if you're anything like me, you think of acids and you think of them being extraordinarily intense. But like, let's say you dropped hydrochloric acid just right into this area. I'm not saying it isn't going to irritate this, but it's not like it's just sizzling through your intestines. Um, Hydrochloric acid is actually a very tame acid, all things considered. And plus it's gonna be diluted by different things inside of the stomach anyways. But in order for the pancreatic enzymes to be most optimal, you also want to increase that pH, meaning you wanna make it more basic, right? You're going away, you, you want it to be less acidic. So not only are you wanting to neutralize the acidity, because you don't want the acid to consume the duodenum, you also want to neutralize that acidity because it makes the pancreas more effective at its job. And so that's going to be an essential component of bile. And so your gallbladder and your liver are both just going to kind of drop the bile straight into there in order for that to happen. Now, you might be wondering, well, why on earth do we have a gallbladder? If the liver is capable of just dropping bile in here, and the liver is so much more massive, why on earth do we need this gallbladder? Well, that is because this is going to also um, concentrate the bile. So what basically happens is once the bile is deposited in here, there's gonna be certain ions like sodium and chloride, for example, that are basically gonna be pulled in and it's gonna be able to manipulate it and actually concentrate that bile and make it stronger that is gonna make it so it's more efficient once the bile gets into the duodenum and is then able to do its job. So it's not that you like need a gallbladder. However, it is obviously very useful because this is and this goes to the question of the day. Like, well, why can we remove it? If bile is so essential for neutralizing stomach acid, if it's so essential for you know making the pancreas more effective, like all those things that we listed, why on earth can you get rid of it? Well, again, because the liver is still directly connected. 
right? So what can happen inside of the gallbladder are what are called gallstones. Gallstones are essentially going to be like hardened minerals of just like cholesterol. And they form these these stones that actually can be kind of uh, pretty. <laughs> they almost look like almost like uh, stream stones, river stones. They can be really colorful, but they are not pretty in function because the problem is that they can get clogged inside of the neck and inside of this cystic duct or possibly even inside of the bile duct itself. And then that can cause a whole lot of issues because then you can get infections. It can cause backflow like pro issues where this gallbladder can start to become inflamed and it could potentially rupture, which is immediately life threatening. So what they'll do is they'll go in there and the best thing to do is just remove the gallbladder. Right? Like it's not, it's, it's not that thing where you're like, okay, I'm just going to cut in, take the stone, go out. No, the actual best thing to do is outright remove the gallbladder. But again, we already decided that the liver is able to drop bile in here. So not a big deal, right? Like it's not a big deal to get your gallbladder removed, right? Well, no, right. I think you probably understand this. If you cannot concentrate the bile, the bile is not going to be as effective. So it's not that you you have no bile. It's just that, well, it's just not going to be as effective as it could have been. And you see this all the time with people who've had their gallbladder removed, where if they're having high fatty meals, it just does not work with their digestive system the same way, right? It's a very painful thing or could be a painful thing because you're not able to properly break down those fats. So look, do you need a gallbladder? Okay, no, you don't need a gallbladder. But do you want a gallbladder? Yes, of course you do. This thing is going to be very helpful um, in, in neutralizing, again, so many different things. And so as we can go down here and you can see just here's that bile duct as it's going down, merging again with the pancreatic duct into that major duodenal papilla. By the way, you can also see over here part of that is going to be the ascending colon, which is going to come over and then cross over to the transverse colon. Um, and that's the other thing is like the gallbladder and the liver are what are called accessory organs or accessory structures to the digestive tract. So basically it's kind of weird to think about, but you are one long tube, right? From point A to point B. Um, and that that's what we call the gut tube, right? So the gut tube is just, it's one empty hollow tube, but on the outside of it, like you have a couple growths and that's going to be like the pancreas. That's going to be the gallbladder. That's going to be the liver. These are accessory organs that are growing outside of it. And what they do is they produce something and then drop it inside of that hollow tube. So the gallbladder is 100% helpful, but not 100% uh, necessary. Hopefully this gives you a pretty good idea as to what on earth this thing is doing. Now, I've, I'm having a blast making these types of videos. So if you are interested in us discussing another thing, another topic or structure, right? There's so many things like you might be like wondering, like, what are those blood vessels? And why is that, you know, ascending colon cut? Like, wh where does it turn into? All you got to do is just let us know in the comments. Just drop down there. And while you're down there, hit, hit the like button and then go ahead and leave us a comment saying, hey, I would love it if you could discuss this or that or this or that. Uh, we would absolutely love to give you what you want instead of just sitting here and guessing. And also remember, we're going to leave a link down in the description to this 100% free Ken Hub article. Um, there's so much value packed in this. This is like one, again, this is probably top five favorite articles for me here on Ken Hub. It is just so dense, so awesome. So I really encourage you to go check it out. But as always, I really appreciate you taking the time to hang out with me and I will see you next time.